I recently acquired this little machine. Its motion is intriguing. Apparently it is deriving energy from a cup of hot water. This is a Stirling heat engine. Like an internal combustion engine, this machine does have a piston, cylinder and crankshaft and it does rely on gas pressure to create motion. But unlike a combustion engine, there is no explosion, no intake or exhaust valves. In fact, the gas involved, which is air, is sealed inside the machine. It stays there. Somehow this reservoir of air is used to cycle energy, creating mechanical motion. The energy being cycled here is heat energy. Exploiting heat energy requires a temperature differential, that is, hot and cold areas in the machine. In this engine, this bottom metal plate is hot, while the upper metal plate, this one, is cool. Note that the cylinder joining the metal plates is plastic, a material that will provide some thermal insulation between the plates. Inside this cylinder is a large loose-fitting piston. Interestingly, this piston does not drive the machine. Named the displacer, it plays a role in heat transfer. We'll return to it in a minute. This small cylinder, with a tight-fitting piston, is the power cylinder. It is the mechanism producing the force to move the machine. Here's how this works. The bottom metal plate is hot. The upper plate is cool. I've rotated the flywheel so that the displacer is at the top. This means the large volume of air below the displacer is exposed to the hot plate. This gas is picking up energy and expanding. The resulting increase in pressure exerts force throughout the closed system, including on the power piston. This force pushes the piston up turning the crank and rotating the flywheel. The displacer is also connected to the flywheel by a crank. This crank now lowers the displacer, exposing the air to the upper cold plate. The air loses energy. Its pressure drops and the momentum of the rotating flywheel moves the power piston back to the bottom and moves the displacer up once again exposing the air to the hot plate. The air expands and the increasing pressure starts the power piston on another power stroke. The flywheel plays an important role. Its momentum maintains motion when the gas is contracting, cycling the machine into the next power stroke. This cycle repeats as long as there is a temperature differential between the upper and lower plates. Apparently, the difference in temperature between your hand and the ambient air can be enough of a differential. I was unable to get the machine to start using the temperature of my hand, but once started with another heat source, the heat from my hand was enough to sustain motion for a few minutes, particularly if I moved outside. The air temperature is minus 7 degrees Celsius here this morning, significantly lower than the temperature of my hand. The invention of the Stirling heat engine is attributed to 19th century Scottish inventor Robert Stirling. The science behind this machine can be attributed to the genius of earlier researchers, people like 17th century scientist Robert Boyle and Blaise Pascal. Like so many other inventions, this elegant little machine represents the creative potential and genius of humankind. Visit our website at hyloroad.com slash sterling for more information about Sterling engines, including links to suppliers of Sterling engine kits. For more science and technology videos, visit our YouTube channel, Science Online.